Don't fasten your restraints, there aren't any. No refunds. This is Mad Panic Coaster. I think it's no secret that I generally despise the PlayStation 1. People seem to have these really fond memories of that thing. They are, oh, it's such great games. Well, it had more games than its contemporaries, and there's a reason it had more games than its contemporaries. Because most of them were shite. It was full of bargain bin titles from places you never heard of. Most of them were fucking awful, and people seem to have forgotten about those. And speaking of games that from like weird companies that you know everybody's forgotten about or never heard of there's one from a company called Haku Hodo which hey if you know me you'll know one of my major gripes today with the gaming industry is that it's run by marketing farms rather than actual game developers and Haku Hodo they're a marketing company so hey they're ahead of the curve but I mean I guess it's nothing new marketing companies have existed in the video game world for as long as there's been video games and Hey, this thing should be bloody terrible by all rights. Don't know who developed it, can't confirm that. It's uh, a Japan-only game. I can't get a manual for it, like, translated properly or anything, but I, I guess we should take a look at it, because, I mean, this thing should... Uh, I should really, really dislike this thing. Upon starting the game, you're greeted by a rather cheap-looking logo and a little animated sequence of the band, and you know what, that's actually pretty good. I kind of like it. Unfortunately, the manual is only in Japanese, and I can't get a proper translation. So the story behind the game seems to be something like a boy and a girl, maybe they were on a date, were in some theme park or other run by the absolutely insane Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones, Jones. No, not that fucking Dr. Jones. And he locks you in the park, where you must now ride all of the roller coasters, or something like that. It doesn't really matter, I don't care, believe me, this game is not story-driven at all. And you're going to forget about it soon enough. You're not going to have a choice. You see, the game starts, or I assume you'd start it, as there's no real options to play with, beyond the sound test, which might come in useful later. Then you get this brief moment to think about what you've done and regret all your life decisions, as some guitar stabs build at tension, and the car rides up the lift hill. The boy and girl scream, and everything devolves into complete and utter chaos. And that's it. That's the game. Really, there's not much else to it. The car hartles around at insane speeds as loud music plays, and you have to steer it to not fall off the track. To make things harder, the track is littered by enemies, and their designs are utterly ridiculous. We've got circus freaks, yetis, women riding a vacuum cleaner, boob mice, and God only knows what else trying to murder us. It's not like the tracks themselves aren't plagued with hazards that are trying to kill you either ranging from holes to swinging blades and all manner of inconveniences. If you touch anything, you will take damage, and once the bar's empty, you're going to fall off the track. To counter this, we do have some things at our disposal. The game, been from 1997, doesn't support the analog stick, meaning you have to steer with the directional pad. This offers less precision, but I actually think this kind of works because it, it means the thrill that you might die is a little bit greater now. You don't have as precise a control. You can jump, but if you do this too much, the car will flip over, so use that sparingly. Then you have the square, triangle, and circle buttons. These will throw a projectile that explodes on impact with the track. Each button throws a projectile a different distance, and the explosion lasts for a little while, so enemies backing into it after it lands will still take damage, and some of them will take more than one hit. If things do seem to be going too fast, you can break by pressing down on the D-pad, but the wheels heat up, and this is only usable for a limited time, so again, you might want to use that wisely. I know what you're thinking, that the game probably controls quite badly at such a speed, and with the projectiles travelling in an arc. You definitely will die a few times upon first playing it, 
but after a while it becomes second nature and you just don't think about it anymore. Which is good, because you don't really have time to think about it. The controls are just the right kind of clunky to actually make the game more thrilling. And let's face it, roller coasters are no fun if you're not at least a little bit afraid of flying off a corner and turning into pizza. I think they probably got this aspect right, to be honest. Yeah, the game mechanics really are simple. I mean, you know, the, the only one I can really go into any depth on is the, the damage bar in the top of the screen. You hit things or fall off the track, the bar goes down, when it runs out, the car goes off the side of the track. There's another mechanic to it where the skulls behind the, the yellow and orange bit, they fall out if the car takes a really big knock, but I've never managed to run it out, so I don't know what happens. I, I assume it's like a, a damage bar for the, the Coaster car, and the the main bar on top of it is for the the kids in the Coaster car. Like, there's them getting injured, and I, I don't know. I've never managed to run the skulls out, so I don't know what would happen. The, it, it, there's no real place to do it. So. I guess they kind of neglected that. You can refill the life bar with these blue gems, but those don't respawn unless you die. So, yeah, once you've picked them up, like on one lap, they're not going to come back. So, you might want to jump over them or steer around them if you're at full health or not full health, because otherwise you're just going to waste it. Worth keeping in mind, like everything else, it's pretty simple, but I think that's probably for the best here, really. There's no need to make it complicated. Things don't, games don't have to be complex to be good. In all seriousness, though, that, that music, it's absolutely perfect. All of it's like that. It sounds like late 90s American punk rock. It's amazingly convincing to say the band is Japanese. So much so that if you had told me these were leftover songs from a Diesel Boy album, I might just have believed you. And maybe it's not your kind of music, but even then I would find it hard to floor it, even if I didn't like it, as the game was a promotional tool for the Mad Panic Coasters. And so, what did you expect? Percy John Lemon songs? Yeah, get bent. The lack of vocals is nice though, as I think that might have ruined it if they'd included those. To that end, each zone does have its own songs, for the most part. There are five zones, Mad Island, Mad Mountain, Mad Ocean, Mad City, and... Um, yeah. Something mad and Japanese sounding, but it's mad, and that's what matters here. In each zone, there are three tracks, and each track has three laps. On the third track of each zone, you fight a boss enemy of some sort, a clown, a rabid reindeer... Oh, you, no, not Romuald. Stuff like that, and yeah, the lap counter will still increment, and if you run out of time, the car's gonna go off the end of the track and you die, so yeah, you might want to get a move on defeating it. And boss fights are a tense experience as they flat out path projectiles onto the track, all while you try to hang on for dear life, slinging your crappy little cherry popper bombs at them until the brakes screech the car to a halt and you move on to the next zone. No one track or boss seems to go on for longer than it ought to, and the bosses don't last too long either. I think each zone does generally go away before it becomes tiresome. All in all, the game isn't even that long, and it might take you about an hour to beat it, if not less. I think that is about right. The final boss is a last long big slog, and the game ends just before its gimmick goes stale. Overall, it feels very much like an arcade title, so... I do think they hit the nail on the head here. It's a quick, fast blast of fun that you can t kill time with on an otherwise boring day, but it's not so engaging that you really do have to dedicate your life to it or anything. You can quite easily walk away whether you finish the game or not and just not think about it for a month or two until you want to play it again. This is helped by the lack of penalty for getting a game over. There is a game over screen, this little zombie will laugh at you, but you can go right back to where you are. Only now you lose your score and you won't get the good ending. This ending, however, is really just a different picture at the end of the game with the girl in a skimpy outfit. So, I mean, if you really want to see that, you better try harder, but it's not like you really get anything else. 
The game does also save your progress to the memory card, so you can turn it off and return to whichever zone you were on later. I suspect this will also invalidate the good ending, so don't expect to see that picture. The difficulty does ramp up quite hard as the game goes on, though again, it never really feels out of place due to the arcade vibe that it emanates and how short it is. Arcade games were there to just take your money, and as there's no real penalty for getting a game over beyond what was mentioned, it never really does get annoying, it's not like you have to start shoving quarters into the PlayStation. I mean, you could try, but I don't think it would necessarily do anything good for the hardware, it might blow up, so not advised. You really don't have time to become annoyed when the game is assaulting your senses at such high speeds, and it is a shame that it doesn't run at 60 frames a second, instead being limited to 30. It will have a few patches of slowdown, but they're fairly few in number, and the PS1 isn't exactly the most powerful thing on the planet, or off the planet, seen as NASA practically sent a radiation-hardened one to Pluto a few years ago, which is absolutely great, because now the aliens over there can play Mad Panic Coaster and think twice about ever invading Earth. The slowdown is probably lessened by the game's use of sprites, as there aren't actually many polygons beyond the track and the scenery which in some games would look cheap, and it kind of does here, but I can't see things working out as polygons. I don't think the PS1 models would really be able to do these designs justice. You wouldn't be able to get as much detail in them, and as you can't turn the camera around or anything, it doesn't really matter. I think this was the right choice, this was the best use of the technology they had available to them on the PS1. Well anyway, I guess that's enough, so let's try and score this game, we have an idea now. So graphics, 17 out of 20. Sure, they do look a little cheap in places, but they're consistent and they're really, really fun. I, I find them enjoyable, I like the design, I like the aesthetic, I like the colour schemes. They got it right, there's nothing wrong with the graphics. Fast, bright, utterly insane, good. Sound, 17 out of 20. Somewhat subjective, but I love the music and would even listen to tracks on the disc on their own. I mean, let's face it, if you buy a game that's promoting a band, then you probably should better like that band's music. I, I mean, it'd be like buying a Beatles album and then not liking the Beatles and saying the album was bad as a result. It's, it doesn't really work, does it? So, yeah, I, the Mad Panic Coaster's music in this game is loud and obnoxious and in your face, just like everything else about this game, which is how I like it. I mean, I'm from the 90s, that probably has something to do with it. Unfortunately, the sound effects are rather crunchy, and I think even the sampler on my Casio RZ1 has a little bit more fidelity. They do fit with the arcadey feel, but they might have been able to do a little better if only for the sample quality. Nonetheless, they're fully functional, and I can't really criticise it too hard. Overall, good. Atmosphere, 14 out of 20. Now, now given this is an arcade-type game, it was never going to perform very strongly here. The game has a vaguely horror-themed world, and it works about as well as it could for a game that isn't driven much by its story or really anything else beyond you're on a roller coaster. I mean, what, what were they going to do here? It's serviceable, sure, and to be honest, I don't really think this aspect matters when it's going to be overshadowed by more important parts of the game. Almost certainly the way this game plays is far more important than anything to do with atmosphere, and we'll get there shortly. In the meantime, story and design, 16 out of 20. Again, very weak story, but the game does not need one beyond having an excuse to exist, because who was going to read the story anyway? All you need to know is that you're stuck on a roller coaster and everything wants to kill you! And that's the part about this aspect that counts, and that part is well done. The tracks especially all have their own gimmicks, and some of them fork into different directions. One such track even requires you find the correct route to increase the lap counter as you try to avoid its many hazards. Yeah, it's small things, but the game does keep throwing this new stuff at you as it goes along, so eh, I think they did pretty well here. Controls and gameplay, 20 out of 20, and this seems to be where the attention went beyond the music, and I think that was the right decision, and I think it shows. The controls do take a moment to learn, but not too long that it's really an issue, and they rapidly become reflexive and intuitive. This lets you just forget all about handling the control pad and focus on the well-crafted gameplay as you shoot along the track at headache-inducing speeds until you want to throw up. The thrill factor is definitely there, 
and it genuinely is a good experience as you progress. Pop a hole in the track, blow up a boss, no complaints here at all. They got this absolutely right. It's pretty much perfect in this regard for what it's trying to be. Honestly, pretty damn good. So overall, this leaves us with a score of 84 points. I'd say that's far. All in all, Mad Panic Coaster is well and truly a mad experience. It's short, its premise is incredibly simple, but it works and it works incredibly well while not overstaying its welcome. It might just be one of the single most unashamedly 90s things I can think of, and it's definitely worth checking out if you're into PS1 era games or arcade style games at all, or if you're just like me and you like things that go insanely fast whilst deafening you with indecently loud music. But I think that's it. Back to the half wit in front of the camera, he can see this thing out. So yeah, that was Mad Panic Coaster. I mean, uh, I probably shouldn't like this game, but I, I really like it. I love this game, it's awesome. But yeah, uh, you might have noticed something a bit off about this one that I didn't ever show you the game packaging or anything, and that's because I can't. I don't own it. You, it's not very common, and if you can find it, it's gonna cost you a couple of hundred dollars or so. And I don't believe in spending that on a video game, that's way overpriced. And also I wasn't running on an actual PlayStation, which yeah, I'm kind of breaking my rules a bit, but my PlayStation doesn't work, because that's what PlayStations do. Luckily PS1 emulation is actually really good, like it's not 100% accurate, but yeah, certainly no, no issues with this game, other than you, a lot of emulators don't seem to understand Redbook Audio, because the game uses Redbook Audio. It's actually quite good on this, because it means you can just put the CD in and listen to the music. It's, uh, you know, but yeah, it's, it's certainly not a hard game to get running. Uh, but I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not paying for an original of this. I, I'd love to earn an original of it, but not at that price. No way. Not going to happen. So, uh, you know, it's not hurting anybody, because they don't sell it anymore. So, what are you supposed to do? But yeah, that's uh, really all I have to say about it. Fun game, Def definitely worth checking out like, at least once. You know, especially if you like arcade games or, or you like things that go really fucking fast and are in your face obnoxious, which is right up my alley. I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's not the video I planned. I was going to do a different game, and I, I just didn't have time. So well, I guess maybe we'll do that one next year. It's, uh, it's just the way things are. It's not a big deal. Um, we'll get back on track soon enough, I'm sure. Like, you know, I, I have ideas. Starting to think, I definitely should get around to talking about some sound cards properly, shouldn't I? I said I was going to do that a long time ago. So, uh, maybe we'll do that next. Maybe. Don't know. Never really do plan that far ahead, because when I, I mean, I used to, but when I make plans, they don't work out. So there's no point in making them. It's just a waste of resources. Anyway, I don't have anything else to say. It's uh, Halloween already, so I guess I better go home and start slapping this together. Should be pretty trivial to do, I suppose. But, uh, you never know, because things have a tendency of not going the way they're bloody supposed to. So, I'm High Treason. Thanks for watching, and remember, until next time, don't be a screw up, load DOS 622 it.